So you didn't think I was going to buy this property without having a tractor, did you? Um, we are going to pull some shrubs tonight. Uh, it's kind of late in the evening. It's 8 o'clock. And to be brutally honest, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but I did buy this little device last week uh, that's made to pull shrubs. And we used it to pull the limbs from the tree. Bundle them up and it's got little grippy things on it. So I got a chain and the shrub grabber. And I bought me a new bigger gorilla card. This is the biggest one. Got it from Tractor Supply. They already had it assembled. And I picked it right up first. I want to show you what I did this morning because I made a little bit of more progress in the garden today. Something that made me feel really good. So I came through and pulled out all of the items in this bed that I showed you in the last video. Uh, I saved the ones that I wanted in containers. A lot of it was weeds and a few petunia annuals. This butterfly bush is also going to go, but it looks fine right now. It needs to be cut back. I didn't want to pull it out a shrub because it's going to be very hot this week and the likelihood of it dying after being pulled directly out of the ground was probably pretty high. So got some things pulled out here. So bare dirt. I did find some more rubber mulch in this bed. This is my another PSA to never ever put rubber mulch into your garden. I dug up what I could and disposed of it. There's probably some pieces here still in there. It's really odd because it was rubber mulch combined with regular mulch. And I don't know why anyone would actually choose to ever intentionally do that. Um, but the items that I'm going to be using today, I purchased from Amazon a few weeks ago. I just did some research online. Uh, and I'm not saying like this pulling device is super heavy duty. Um, but it should work well for pulling out these shrubs. Now... You can hook this to a truck if you have one. Um, I'm going to use the tractor since I got this tractor. This tractor is a 2008 model John Deere that was used by the previous owner. Um, well maintained and I got it for a good price. It's got a mower attachment. That's primarily why I purchased it. But it also has a bucket attachment and some other attachments that will come incredibly handy over the coming years. It's still in really good shape. And we're going to see if it can pull these shrubs out tonight. We're going to start with the spireas. I may just start and pull the spireas. There's only four of them here. I've mentioned these before. They're not the healthiest shrubs. They could probably be cut back and maybe rejuvenated. But they look really, really bad. Um, you can see how much dead is in here. And I, I don't know what I'll put back in this zone or this area of the garden. Uh, but they need to come out so I can think of something to put there. Another Spirea option is good choice. Proven Winners has some really good ones, uh, like Double Play Big Bang, I think is the one I had at the other house that I really liked. Double Play Doozy is also a good option because it uh, reblooms all summer. So overall, not the like prettiest things right now. Um, and like I said, they probably could use a rejuvenation prune, but I want to start over from scratch in most of this garden because a lot of the things here are also just very old. And there's lots of new varieties on the market that have improvements in some version, whether it be a smaller habit. You can see how big those are and kind of growing over the sidewalk. We kind of want to avoid that and stick stuff there that's maybe a little smaller and a tidier habit. Uh, and then, of course, the viburnum right here as well. Uh, which you can't see because of this light. There we go. I've showed you before. Uh, are also really overgrown. Um, and may have been one time. Those are pretty popular ones. They actually were the shrubs. Uh, probably the same variety that was at my last home that I pulled out. I'm really allergic to those. Um, when we pulled them out probably six years ago, five or six years ago, I broke out really bad on my arms. So I probably won't be doing those tonight for that reason as well. That might be something I try and tackle tomorrow and I'll probably have to actually cut off some bigger branches of that before I can get this little device around the base of the shrub. So I've used it. It's kind of scuffed up already. Uh, it's still got the tag on it, but you can see here it's got little little uh, grabby things and it goes through this loop. You put it around the base of the shrub and then it forms a little knot there and you just attach it to your tractor. I have a pulling chain as well, so I'm gonna be pretty far away from it. If you're doing any of this at home, be very careful, but this is a learning experience for me and you're gonna watch.
So this right here is pokeweed, which I don't see much up here. I actually are more familiar with it from Alabama. Also called poke salad is what we always called it as kids. Uh, and it's growing sporadically in here. Um, you can eat it. It is poisonous, so you have to cook it very specifically. I, I am obviously not going to be doing that. Uh, but let's see what we can get done here. This thing is also not super long. So you have to kind of be able to tie it around something that is small enough to get the whole chain around. Let's see. And that will allow me to get in here and clean out these beds completely. There we go. There we go. Now, let's get the chain. Just so you know, this was excellent for pulling the limbs around the yard. But with these shrubs that don't have such a strong trunk, I think it's just wanting to pull and break the tiny limbs rather than actually pulling the shrub out of the ground. We're going to try next one, see how it is. It might be rooted in differently. So that was a fail for shrubs that have lots of uh, stems but no really trunk. I think it will come in real handy and I'll show you when I pull out the viburnum. But for the smaller shrubs, I learned since I've never used that before for pulling shrubs, uh, that you should just dig them because they're shallow rooted. The problem is this ground right here is real tough. It's next to the house, probably doesn't get a whole lot of water from the roof line because our rain doesn't run this way and that's probably why a lot of these plants on this side haven't thrived. They're not on drip. So let's see what I can do to get this out. So I hope that removal of these first shrubs is not an indication of how this garden renovation is going to go because that was tough. Part of the reason we did have rain this week, but over the eaves of your house, uh, those aren't the best places for shrubs that aren't, that are thirsty shrubs really, um, because the gutters catch a lot of that water or the rain, the, the roof blocks it. So. The soil's really dry. I probably could have moistened it up. One thing I've done when I started renovating the last garden is use a sawzall or a reciprocating saw uh, to cut out the roots of the old shrubs. And that might be what I have to do here on the spirea. Um, you kind of ruin a blade and you could potentially ruin the tool. Uh, mine's a plug-in DeWalt and it does a really good job and it removed all of the shrubs at my old house that needed to be removed. So. I'm gonna get these finished uh, myself and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. I don't wanna lose too much light and I'd like to tackle this tiny project tonight so I can at least feel some success of getting a back bed cleaned out and the small front bed in one day. All right guys, well, I know I'm not necessarily pretty right now, but uh, I got most of the spirea up and I did end up breaking out the DeWalt uh, saws all, so I'll show you that right quick. That's right here. I just plugged it into this outlet that I have right here, and it helped me cut out some of these really, really tough spirea. Um, and now I know why they were looking so bad. They were clearly an old variety that tended to spread um, in clumps, and they were growing under these rocks. And that's probably why they were dying back so bad, along with the lack of adequate moisture. But they were like growing under here, and I had a really tough time getting them out, and why I had to break, bring the saws all out. But there were also some really thick roots that I wouldn't have been able to get through. So it's just nice to be able to cut those down under the ground, and they can just rot in place. Hopefully they won't come back. Uh, if they do, we'll address, uh, address that then. The soil right here looks pretty good. Uh, you can see how... Uh, flaky it is there. 
the nice texture of it. So I'm hoping we can plant some beautiful things here. Obviously still a lot of work to do in this bed, but that makes me happy that I was able to get those four shrubs out and the back bed cleaned up. So we only have two other big shrubs up here I want to take out. As I mentioned, I'm going to try and save the boxwoods. Um, I'll probably, it's a little early after next week. We're supposed to have really hot period of time this coming week. So after this week, I may go ahead and trim them up because we'll be getting into September uh, severely, like cutting them back really hard. So they'll have some time to put on some fresh growth in their growing season as it cools off before winter. Because uh, there's a lot of dead spots in them right now. And I mentioned in a couple videos ago about the box, it's called the box tree moth, I think is what it's called. That's kind of decimating some boxwoods around us. So I'm going to avoid putting more in my garden, I think, and find alternatives. Some people mentioned hollies um, or ilex. Those aren't really good options around here because of our high alkaline soil. They tend to like a little more acidic soil. After I do my soil test, we'll see what the soil's like. But I imagine this entire area is probably pretty alkaline, just like it was at my last property. And I'm going to put up the tractor uh, and go take a shower and get cleaned up because I'm a little itchy now. Uh, I'm not breaking out. You can see I'm kind of uh, marked up here a little bit. It'll go down after my skin settles. My skin irritates kind of pretty easily, not super easily. And it makes doing jobs like this kind of kind of itchy and difficult. But we're losing light, so I'm going to get cleaned up. And tomorrow's another day. I don't know if I'll get much tackled. The week's getting really hot this coming week. Um, I might actually just take a break tomorrow and enjoy inside because um, it's been a really long week. And I got accomplished enough of what I wanted to get accomplished, I think. So... I hope you all enjoyed this video, even though it wasn't, didn't end up exactly like I planned with a shrub puller. We'll try that again. It worked really well for pulling limbs. I mentioned that. So it's not a complete bust and it wasn't a waste of money. Um, but for shrubs that sprout from the base like spireas, it doesn't seem to be a very good option. Uh, it just breaks those off and pulls them off. So a little more wood, I think, would have done a better job. But thanks for joining me, guys. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone.